Well, it's that time of year, everyone. It's back to school season. And for those of you who this applies to, high school, college, I'm so sorry. But it doesn't have to be all bad because now is the perfect time to upgrade some gear, find some new stuff you've been needing to buy for a while, or just take advantage of some really awesome sales that always happen during this time of year. And even if you're not a student, if you're not going back to school, this is still a good time because there are a lot of cool products coming out around this time of year every year. So sit back, relax, and let's take a look at the best back to school tech for animators in 2019. So let's start off with some small gadgets, some little things to get us excited. Now, if you've watched my channel for a while, you're probably familiar with these. The palette gear, arcade buttons, sliders, and dials. I've used them for I've had two years now. I always have them on my desk, huge part of my workflow. Now in that same kind of category of having hotkeys and having buttons to reduce the amount of time it takes to do certain tasks that you do over and over, let me introduce you to the Elgato Stream Deck. Now, if you are familiar with gamers on Twitch or YouTube gaming or wherever, you've probably seen this before. Normally it's used for streamers to switch between all kinds of different lighting setups and different things for gameplay. But what no one's really talked about is that you can use it for really anything and specifically Maya. I have this linked up to use the Anambot hotkeys from if you haven't seen my Maya scripts video and all the cool stuff that these different scripts, especially Anambot can do. I have it set up for a ton of different animation stuff and what's really great about the Stream Deck is that you don't have to remember what hotkeys you put on which button, you just put it on the screen. You can have it in a GIF format, you can have just PNG images on each button, you can do a GIF or a GIF or whatever you want to call it. And the overall Stream Deck comes in a mini, a regular, and an extra large size, depending on your budget and your needs. Another product I keep around for convenience, always at my desk, is the Google Home Speaker. It's a nice thing to have at the desk when you're like, oh, I need to do math really quick, or a reminder. For me, it's very helpful in just maintaining concentration. Now let's break away from some of the smaller products for a little bit. I want to talk about laptops, because there's some really wild laptops that have come out recently, or they're coming out soon, that I want to tell you about. Now if you're looking for a new computer, whether it's a laptop or a desktop, Top, I do have a video on, you know, a PC guide to what are the components, what are the specs, what does it all mean, and what does it mean in the context of animation. So if you haven't seen that video, highly recommend checking that out. But assuming you've seen it and you're going to pick a laptop, you have a ton of options. But that said, let's talk about some laptops that are geared towards what we do. The laptops that are making the most noise right now are the NVIDIA RTX Studio laptops. These are laptops from all different manufacturers that have an RTX graphics card built into the laptop, giving it a lot of graphic performance for 3D visual creation tools for AI and computer science type of applications and for gaming, streaming, and all that other kind of fun stuff. There's a whole bunch of them and I'm not gonna go into every single one, so I put a link down below if you wanna check those out. Now, if you're in a position where none of the RTX laptops are in the cards for you right now, two things for you. One is that you should definitely check out this video because this is a contest running to the end of September. And in this video, I tell you about a contest that is actually really easy to enter where you can win one of these laptops. So you should check that out if you haven't already. But the second thing is that if that's not in the cards for you, if you're not gonna be able to afford an RTX Studio laptop and you still wanna get something powerful, they also have GTX laptops, which is NVIDIA's GTX cards in other laptops. So it's a slight step down from the RTX cards, but still really powerful and really great. Two other laptops I wanna tell you about. One is one that's not out yet, but it looks ridiculous. The Asus ZenBook Pro Duo. Now this is a really crazy looking laptop that I think is coming out very soon. We've all seen how the new MacBook Pros have the little touch bar, right? And arguably it's either kind of helpful or not useful at all, but Asus has come up with basically a dual screen computer where it's one screen on top and another screen on the bottom where you can do all kinds of crazy multitasking gesture stuff. Seems really interesting. So definitely something to keep an eye on. I actually really wanna get my hands on this to try it. By the way, I wanna do a lot more tech reviews. So if you guys have anything you want me to review, drop it in the comments. One last note, if you are an Apple person through and through and you are thinking about buying an Apple computer anytime in the near future, Back to school season is a really good time for it because if you are a student or a teacher, you usually get a pretty sweet educational discount on the computers and you often get like free $200 wireless Beats headphones with a computer. That's what I did last year. Pretty sure that deal's going on this year. So if you are gonna buy an Apple computer or even a Windows computer, there's usually a lot of discounts for you. Now, if you're looking for more power and less mobility, you can always get a desktop computer. And if you haven't heard of it already, PCPartPicker.com is a website, it's a free website that allows you to compare different computer components and make sure they work together. So if you are gonna build it yourself, if you have a friend who builds computers, that will help you figure out which parts will actually coexist in the same computer body. But if you don't wanna deal with all that and you do wanna have a custom computer made for you, my computer, which I'm super, super happy with, is from Puget Systems. They are a custom PC building company. They're super knowledgeable. They run a ton of tests. There's a ton of good info on their site. So whether or not you're buying from them, you should absolutely check out their site if you're looking into a desktop PC. Now moving on to monitors, laptop or desktop. Sometimes it's nice to expand how much screen real estate you have 
to work with. If you guys have watched my channel for a while, you know that I love a good ultra wide monitor. Whether it's 16 by nine or a 32 by nine ratio, I will put a good budget friendly one down in the link below, as well as a bigger version. I'm currently using the 38 inch 16 by nine monitor, which I did a whole video about. And I'm also using the 42 inch 32 by nine monitor. It's currently my primary display and it's insane. It's huge. They're particularly good for any application with a timeline or with lots of panels you wanna dock around your screen. Now, if you're looking for a monitor with a little bit more functionality, you wanna be able to draw on the screen, for example, you may wanna consider a display tablet. Now there are drawing tablets, graphic tablets that they don't have a screen on them. You plug them in as a USB device and you look at the screen and you draw down here. That's cool. And I started out with one of those. They're a great starter tool. I'll have some of those linked down below. But if you're doing a lot more drawing, sometimes it's really helpful to be able to actually draw on the screen and see what you're drawing on the same surface that you're doing it. That's where a display tablet's gonna come in. These generally, you do have to plug into a computer just to get that out there. I get a lot of questions on that. At the very top of the food chain, you've got the Wacom Cintiq. And I currently am using the Wacom Cintiq Pro 24 inch, which is massive. Comes with a nifty remote, which I'm actually a huge fan of. I didn't think I'd like it, but I do. But this thing's not cheap. It's great, but it's not cheap. But if you are just starting out, if you're in high school, going into college, you haven't been doing this a very long time and you're just looking for something to get started, check out maybe the XP Pen lineup. They have different options and the prices are much, much lower. And there are other brands as well, but I have had some experience with the XP Pen ones and I've liked them so far. Now, stepping away from the display tablets, just one quick thing about tablets in general, iPads, I should probably mention, super, super handy, great tools. Amazing for drawing. The Procreate app is probably the app that you've seen everyone drawing in. It's like the greatest drawing app there is right now. You also can do some 2D animation on there with tools like Rough Animator. It's an app that's like four bucks. It's not bad at all. Before finishing up with the tech, let's jump really quickly over to software. If you're looking for 3D software, you've probably already heard of Blender. Blender is a free 3D open source, fully featured software package. It's really cool. Uh, the new version is what everyone's talking about right now because it's got a lot of really awesome features. So there's that. Then there is Maya, which is the industry standard for an animation package. It's what Disney uses. They have other tools to go alongside it. But Maya is pretty much the go-to for character animation software. And while the commercial version is very expensive, you can get it for free with a student license. The student license you can get even if you're not a student, you just say that you are. They wanna get it in the hands of people who want to learn. And there's no limitations, there's no watermarks, there's nothing weird. You're just not supposed to use it for commercial purposes. That's it. And the one I haven't talked about much on this channel but I wanna get way more into is Cinema 4D. Cinema 4D is like if Houdini and After Effects had a baby. Cinema 4D is just incredible. It's like, it's, it's so cool. And there's more tutorials and documentations and cool videos about how to do stuff in Cinema 4D than any other tool. Maya, Blender, doesn't matter. Cinema 4D is incredible. And you can get a free student version. I think you have to contact Maxon, the company who makes it. You don't just sign up and get it immediately. You have to prove you're a student. But oh man, it's worth it and it's awesome. There's also a student discount on Adobe Creative Cloud and lots of other tools. For example, if you are an After Effects user, Red Giant, they are a company that makes plugins for Premiere, for After Effects. They have really, really cool stuff. So if you haven't heard of Red Giant and you are an After Effects user, link below, check it out. They have a student discount that knocks half the price off everything. That's pretty much when I bought all my stuff. I have everything they make. I bought a ton of it when I was in college. Saved a lot of money that way. I highly recommend you do the same while you can. All right, a few more items to get through. Let's rapid fire. VR, if you haven't done VR, if you wanna get into creating for VR, there's so many opportunities, so many jobs, so many freelance projects, there's so much stuff going on. Now might be a good time to pick up one of the Oculus headsets. You've got the Rift S, which is the really powerful, connects to your computer, high quality gaming one. And then you've got the Rift Quest, which is a wireless system that you don't even need a computer for. And it's not coming off your phone. It's real VR, much, much better than any of the mobile stuff you guys may have tried. Headphones and speakers, I don't need to get too much into them, but look for something noise canceling, look for something that's gonna keep you focused in your workflow. And now's a good time to look for sales or bundles when you buy something else, you may be able to get a pair of headphones discounted or free. Now the last pieces of tech that I wanna talk about are stuff that focuses around your health and your body. Because as digital artists, as animators, whatever it is you do, we're probably sitting a lot. We're probably in front of the computer a lot. We're probably not quite as active as we should be. So there are little things you can do here and there to make sure you are taking care of yourself, at least a little bit. So some of the things tech-wise that I wanna bring up, for example, one is a vertical mouse. I have this vertical mouse. It looks kind of funny, I know. When I first got it, I thought it was gonna be weird. It takes no time to learn. It's, there's no learning curve, it's totally normal. It's much more natural, much more comfortable, and I, I love this thing. It, I have noticed a significant difference, a lessened amount of wrist pain when I'm at the computer for long periods of time. To go along with that, I absolutely hate the regular Wacom Cintiq pens. These big, thick pens, I'm just gonna show it here. The way I hold my pen is kind of funny. People tell me that this is like super weird, crime against nature, an abomination, or all these things. But this is how I hold pens. 
take it or leave it. Uh, I can't stand this thing, so I have the Slim Pen. This is much better, so invest in a Slim Pen or some kind of a grip, a rubber grip, if that's gonna be more useful to you. Another thing I use, uh, blue light glasses. I don't need glasses. I have good vision, thankfully, and these just filter out some of the harmful blue light. <laughs> These help a lot. Now finally, the last piece of tech. A motorized standing desk and also a good chair. You spend so much time sitting down at a desk, it can really impact your back. For example, I'm using this horrible, horrible $10 Ikea chair. I hate this thing, but it's cheap, and that's what I use because realistically, it, you know, it costs me nothing. This desk also from Ikea, super useful, but it's not the right height. I'm not using the most ergonomic setup. I used to have a standing desk at DreamWorks, and I didn't have nearly as much pain even when I wasn't standing. It, everything was at least aligned properly. So I will talk about this in a future video, but I am gonna link to some standing desks and better chairs because how you sit and how you work at your desk can have huge lasting impacts on your health. But on that very positive note, I hope you found some of these recommendations helpful. I hope you find some of them interesting because there's a lot of awesome products out right now that can help you with your workflow, that can make your life a little bit easier or just more fun while you're working. So links are down in the description and if you wanna see what these things look like in use live or if you wanna to talk to me more in depth, jump over and hang out with me live on Twitch and we'll talk about it. But anyways, good luck to those of you going back into school. Congratulations on those of you who are no longer in school. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you in the next video.